Hey everybody, how you doing? My name is Pete Coco. I am the bass player for the Frank Vignola Quintet. And today we're going to talk about walking bass lines, uh, specifically walking over a blues progression. Now this is one of the most important things you will have to be able to do as a bass player. And let's talk about the progression. First, is 12 bar blues is a standard progression. If you don't know that progression, you should first of all learn it and you should also learn the different variations. The basic 12 bar blues is a one, a four, and a five chord. So for example, in the key of F, you have an F chord, an F7, B flat seven, C7, back to F, which is what rock musicians and blues musicians will use. We're gonna talk more about a jazz blues, which is basically the same structure, the same basic structure, except they add a lot of two five chords and there's some other chords added in there. Now the first thing you want to do when you're walking a bass line is hit the root note of each chord on the downbeat of every measure. So for example, if the chord is F, dominant seven, you play an F. The chord is B flat, dominant seven, you play a B flat. That should be your downbeat. So you can actually sketch it out if you take a piece of manuscript paper and you write down the 12 bar progression, you can actually place the root note of each chord at the beginning of each measure. You'll always know where to be at least at the beginning of the measure, even if you're not sure where to be in between. The second step is to take the measures that have two chords each. So for example, in a jazz blues, in the key of F, you have F7, B flat seven, F7, then C minor, F7, into the B flat chord. Now in those bars that have two chords, basically you just want to play two roots. That's the easiest way to navigate that and it'll sound good. You'll actually hear a lot of great bass players do that. And now if you fill in those measures, you have the C minor to the F7, into the four chord, then back to the one chord, then you have an A minor, D7, to G minor, for a bar, to C7 for a bar, back to F. So on those other measures, A minor to D, you want two A's and two D's. If you write it out, it'll be a lot easier to see. Um, then, what do you do in between? So if we do what we just did, we have this. F chord, C minor, progression. So now you'll see that if you use this little technique you have most of what you need already filled in automatically. Now as far as putting the tones in between, what you want to use is chord tones and scale tones. So now here's where a little theory comes in. You have to know how to play a dominant scale. Now a dominant scale is almost the same as a major scale. We play a major scale, F major, FG, A, B flat, C, D, F. A dominant scale is all the same except for that E is an E flat, so you have a flatted seventh note, so it sounds like this. So now basically what you want to use are those chord tones in addition to some chromaticism to get you from that F chord to that B flat chord and back. So for example, it might sound something like this. Now basically what I did was I plugged in those scale tones in between my root notes on the downbeat of every measure. Um, and what you can do is do that on each chord and then eventually you'll have something that sounds more or less like this. other little stuff that you heard in there was chromaticism. Chromaticism is the other thing we can use to get from one chord into another. What is chromaticism? It's going from one note to the very next note a half step away. Like a chromatic 
scale. So now if I put some chromatic tones in between the scale tones, it's, it gives it another flavor, it makes it sound a little bit more seamless. So like if I walk down from the F chord, so what I did is I played chromatic B to the C, chromatic F sharp back down to the F. So these are all little tools you can use. Um, basically, you want to plot yourself out at first and find the chord tones, hit those downbeats, make sure you have a strong root note on every downbeat because that's what's going to drive the band, that's what's going to make all the other musicians know exactly where you are in the form. And then later on, you can start incorporating all of these other little techniques. Um, practice every day, transcribe bass lines, listen to Ray Brown and Paul Chambers and Milt Hinton, transcribe what they did, learn it, play along with it, and you'll definitely know how to walk really well. And thank you very much. I'm Pete Coco. This is Vinny Raniolo. We are members of the Frank Vignola Quintet, and we're going to demonstrate walking bass line over an F blues progression, as we talked about earlier. All right. Ready, Vin? Yeah, catch it off, Petey. One, two, one, two, three, four.